Hi, I'm Cody, a product manager on Android. And I'm Joyce, a developer relations engineer on Chrome OS. Android is a powerful and highly capable platform for developers to build and deliver great app experiences for their users. Native Android apps offer performance optimizations, device hardware access to things like the camera and sensors, and offline functionality, which are all important for creating feature-rich experiences. But Android apps can also further extend their capability by integrating web content and functionalities into it. So whether you'd like to leverage your existing web app investments and bring it to the Android platform, or have an existing Android app and would like to take advantage of the power and flexibility of the web, you can consider the different web on Android APIs and technologies available today. In fact, over 3 million Android apps are already using Embedded Web today. When and how you deploy Embedded Web depends on your use case and needs. So let's dive further into each of these technologies to learn more. The two main Embedded Web technologies we will cover today are WebView and Custom Tabs. WebView is an Android system component that allows web pages to be displayed within an activity layout. It can be customized and controlled to integrate and interact seamlessly with your native app, but in its simplest form, it's a view that displays web pages. Custom Tab is a feature of Android browsers that allows a customized browser experience within an app. It's powered by a user's preferred browser, but also allows some developer customization to the user experience. The first use case we will cover is when you are looking to add web content to your main app experience where you own or control the content. In this use case, we recommend using Android WebView. Built on the open source Chromium engine, Android WebView is the most common Android API for embedded web. WebView is a view to display web content. It does not include features of a traditional web browser such as navigation controls or an address bar. This is so you can build in line with the rest of your app for a seamless user experience. Given the high flexibility and customization of WebView, it works really well as a main supporting element to your app experience as users typically won't even know it's web-powered content. Some of the most common ways you can customize WebView are being able to resize the web element based on your use case and need, handle events which impact content rendering such as form submissions, or using JavaScript to interact with and respond to the rest of your app code. With the advantages and flexibility of WebView, here are use cases where WebView will typically be a good option. As shown on our initial slides with Gmail, HTML text editing. Because you may already have an existing investment with a web surface where you leverage text editing, it can make sense to leverage the capabilities of an HTML text editor within your app as well so you can have a single source you edit and deploy across your app and web. Second, HTML-based web pages such as articles, lists, web games, or other pages. Similar to the first, there are many times when you as an app developer already have an existing web page you want to seamlessly integrate into your app experience without taking the user to a browser. This is another good time to consider using WebView. No, Android does have powerful tools to build and recreate this content as well with TextView and other views. The times to consider WebView are typically best when the content is subject to a high frequency of iteration. Think about what King does with their popular Candy Crush Saga game. WebView allows them to iterate and launch in-app campaigns where they can iterate and cycle through while keeping the core game experience and release cycle the same. A news article is another good example. News articles can be updated and modified in real time as news continues to come in and oftentimes are powered by a website. Because you own or have a high degree of trust with this content, you can be confident what is being surfaced with a web source will be accurate and safe. Another common use case to consider using WebView is to display third-party content like ads. Ads are a powerful tool to tailor your user experience and generate revenue when well done. WebView enables you to power these ad experiences from existing SDKs or other sources tailored to your app users for a seamless integrated app experience. Before we move on, we want to be sure to share with you what's new and coming soon to Android WebView. First up, WebView now integrates with family link content controls. Next. We've also added support so you can integrate with various payment providers like Google Pay or others to pass their payment experiences. And WebView now also supports passkeys as an authentication method. Additionally, rolling out now, we have some significant investments we've made to improve startup, load, and rendering times in WebView for greater performance. This is an area we are continuing to invest in and are excited for additional improvements to come. In summary, think WebView when you are looking to embed web content as a part of your main or supporting app experience for the benefits of flexibility and customization. Now, let's look at the second use case for using embedded web within your app. 
In-app browsing is best for when you are looking for a more full and traditional browsing experience, but still want it done within the context of your app. While WebView can also be used in this scenario, it is typically for very advanced custom browsing experiences where you have a high level of investment to build and maintain the experience. Instead, we recommend custom tabs as the primary method to implement an in-app browsing experience. With custom tabs, your app directly launches a customizable browser experience and loads web content in it. Users remain in your app while they browse so they can stay engaged and return easily to the app. Here you can see an example of a custom tab and its basic default anatomy. You'll notice that the web page is open full screen with a browser address bar at the top. Let's zoom in on it. The address bar displays the URL of the current web page, letting the user know what website they're currently looking at. This also indicates to the user that they're viewing this content from the custom tabs browser. There's also a close button, which lets the user easily close the custom tab and return to the app. A share button, as well as an additional menu, gives the user access to other browser actions. Remember, custom tabs are a feature of, and by default, powered by a user's preferred Android browser. Therefore, it also has access to any API or feature offered by the browser. There's no additional maintenance overhead for things like managing permissions, storing cookies, and saving passwords because it automatically shares state with the browser. With custom tabs, you're getting all of these powerful browser features out of the box. On the other hand, this means capabilities may vary and customizations will differ. Though most browsers have some level of support for custom tabs, it's important to verify the availability of features and ensure compatibility of your implementation across browsers. Here's how you would check if the user's default browser supports custom tabs with the get package name helper method. If no package is returned, this means that custom tabs are not supported by the default browser. In this scenario, you can continue to check if other browsers on the device support custom tabs or fall back to a standard action view intent to launch the URL in any available browser. In general, custom tabs are good as a powerful out of the box browsing experience. They allow you as an app developer to develop your primary app experience and also benefit from the capabilities of full browsers while keeping users within your app context. It is a simple and easy way to provide your users seamless transition to and from an embedded web browsing experience. Thanks to the shared state, there's also reduced friction for users if they've already signed into and granted permissions to the site before. More importantly, the user's credentials are protected and stay isolated to any third-party sites. Keeping in mind the strengths and limitations of custom tabs, let's take a look at some examples. In this example, you can see that clicking on a link in a YouTube video description opens up a custom tab displaying the website. In this use case, the link is not controlled by YouTube because the video uploader manages the links that they'd like to show in the description of their video, and the link goes to third-party content not owned by YouTube. By using a custom tab to open these description links, the YouTube app doesn't have to worry about the best way to integrate it into its existing native app UI and experience. Instead, it can hand it off to the device's default browser to provide the browsing experience. At the same time, the user stays within the YouTube app and can easily exit the custom tab once they've completed their browsing journey. They are then returned back to the YouTube app and the video they were on. Next, we have the Reddit app. When a user taps on an in-app ad, instead of taking the user out of their Reddit app context and redirecting them to an outside browser, the ad link is launched in a custom tab. Custom tabs allow a light touch way to embed this content into their app while continuing to keep the user in their app. To get started with using a custom tab to open a link, you'll need to first install and add the Android X browser library to your project. Then create a custom tabs intent and use it to launch the URL. But there's a lot more you can do in terms of UI customization. These include setting the browser bar color to match your branding, adding a custom close icon, and displaying the document title with the URL. You can also configure the entrance and exit animations for when the user transitions to and from the web browsing experience. Here you can see the custom tab slides in from the right when it's launched. The, then upon exit, it slides back out to the right. While there will be signals to the user that they're in a web browsing experience, these customizations allow you to adapt the appearance and behavior so it still matches and feels like a part of your main app experience. 
Starting in Chrome 107, you can also specify a launch height so the custom tab doesn't launch as a full window and instead as a partial custom tab, which behaves as a bottom sheet that the user can also drag up to expand to full screen. As with all custom tab features, support for these customizations may vary across browsers, so always verify availability of features and ensure compatibility of your implementation against browsers and browser versions. Now, let's build on what we've learned about custom tabs and take a look at a related technology. Trusted Web Activities, or TWAs for short, are a subclass of the Android Activity class. It also allows an Android app to open web content and uses a protocol based on custom tabs. Therefore, web content rendered in a TWA is similarly rendered by the user's browser, so it also supports the same browser features and APIs. With custom tabs, we saw that there is some minimal browser UI shown in the address bar, like the URL and close button. TWAs, however, do not have the address bar, and the web content is shown full screen. This capability of TWAs is enabled by the fact that content in a TWA is considered trusted. The Android app and website are expected to be owned by the same developer. Hence, the browser address bar can be removed as there's no need to indicate to the user that they're consuming third-party web content. OK, to close out, let's give a quick summary of what we've covered. Here's a quick run through of the features and advantages supported by WebView and custom tabs, so you'll be able to make an informed decision when choosing which to use. If embedding web content that is your own, whether as primary or supporting content, WebView is great for more advanced control of the UI and more seamless integration with your native app code and UX. You can leverage JavaScript to interact with your app code. Its flexibility and advanced controls allow you to implement better customization to mix and match and coordinate the web and native Android components of your app into a tightly integrated experience for your user. Custom tabs have the full power of the user's default browser behind it. So it can provide a great in-app browsing experience with some minimal browser UI, while preserving user privacy and reducing user friction, thanks to the shared state of things like permissions and cookies, which they isolated from the Android client. Lastly, check out the links below to get the technical documentation for everything we covered. Developer.android.com is your go-to resource for all things Android development, including embedded web on Android. Thank you for joining us to learn about best practices for using embedded web in your Android apps. We can't wait to see how you take advantage of these technologies to build powerful and capable applications for your users.